he is an expert in artificial intelligence and he is working with uh, Supreme Court of India as well uh, on the on the artificial intelligence. Uh, can you shed some light about your work uh, with the Supreme Court of India? We are a deep tech company that has been developing AI applications for the past four years. And we've been specializing in the field of natural language processing. So because natural language, I mean language processing is something that requires in the legal field, we picked legal intelligence. Uh, the work with Supreme Court is such that the Supreme Court currently is interested in using artificial intelligence to deal with the pendency and the multiple issues that the people might be facing at large. So they have invited a couple of experts. Um, I have been fortunate to be uh, on the panel and uh, we are currently working to assist the judges, assist the team to speed up the process of judicial research and legal research primarily. So that's pertaining to the area where we are working at right now. Uh, at this point of time, I cannot really say what directions we might take or unfold from here. Would you mind working with the Indian Tax Appellate Tribunal as well, given the opportunity, or you are still you're working with them as well? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting uh, area to work in. I, I guess we are open to working with any area uh, of law, especially because law is a very interesting area for me since I've started my journey over here. Um, so yeah, income tax is, uh, is a great place, especially now because um, income tax deals with a lot of numbers. And as you may realize, computers are very great at numbers. So uh, it might be rather easier for us to perform um, with our systems in a place like Income Tax Appellate Tribunal than we might be able to deliver in uh, Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities where they have more of criminal cases with no numbers and more of descriptions. Let me ask uh, some more of a personal question. You have been to US and you're working on artificial intelligence for a while. Can you shed some light on that and take us through on what, what has been your experience like and what is the existing a pattern in the worldwide uh, uh, tech world or deep tech world? Uh, well, the pattern and trend right now worldwide is that uh, big data. Well, we've all been hearing about big data since the past 10 years now. Uh, but now the world is actually picking up to it just because there are a lot of open source tools and technologies available for people to use. So what would, not, what would be possible for a company as big as Google or IBM to execute as an experiment say 15 years earlier is possible uh, for people with not more than 100 rupees or 200 rupees in the pockets. So I, I see a great uh, acceleration that is going to take place over the next five years and you would see hundreds and thousands of AI companies coming about and uh, they're working in every field imaginable. So from computer vision, where basically, for example, identifying if uh, uh, there is an anti-terrorist threat, you want to identify language issues, if you want to do uh, robotics, military, um, education, uh, food, uh, I mean agriculture, there, there is no area of life that where, area, where AI cannot touch upon. Because with AI, what uh, the world has come to is essentially replicating human ability uh, at a less accuracy level, I would say. Two points uh, here. Our Prime Minister also talks about uh, utilizing artificial intelligence and machine learning into the uh, execution of government schemes. That is one, and Niti Aayog is working on that, and I'm told uh, Niti Aayog uh, CEO Amitabh Kansji is very interested into that. Uh, and second, uh, most important is with the artificial intelligence coming into existence in India, taking a shape in India, uh, and the 5G on mobile, where do you see this mix? I think the world is going to, <laughs> uh, is going to accelerate beyond control. Right now is the right time. Uh, it's good that our institutions and our government is thinking about this. I see this as a very positive sign uh, because countries like China and America, AI just popped up and now they have uh, trials going on with Mark Zuckerberg and all of the tech companies because there's no, there's no policy to regulate this industry. And now that we have an interest from the government and from institutions, uh, I guess it's a, it's a great, uh, I, I think it will grow in a very, very positive manner in a country like India. With blockchain and as a cryptocurrency taking over the world by storm, and now the artificial intelligence inbuilt into it, where do you see the madness? Uh, the madness is that uh, we might stop seeing many of the activities that 
seem very normal and we take for granted over here. Uh, cash, for example, in India especially, it's still very prevalent. Uh, we might take for granted uh, that no one's supervising, no one's looking at me, but we might just come about and see that there is a camera in every corner and uh, it's been monitored by an AI system managed in a blockchain, so there's no way to actually hack in or destroy your server if you want to get away from any of the mistakes that you've committed. So I think it's going to be a world that is going to be tamper-proof. Uh, so we have to be very careful uh, how we design these systems and how we do not uh, compromise on the rights and liberty of people. You touched upon the most important point about liberty and rights. Face recognition softwares and that lot of mobile apps on that recognizing face. And it's also a, in the traffic of US, UK and a lot of Western countries. Isn't it a privacy a breach as well, which is again coming into the law, whether in U Western world or in India? Well, I'm not qualified to talk about law. Uh, I can give you my perspective on this. Uh, so I think systems like these that have been used, uh, I think you, you've seen a video from China. Uh, that's what we are talking about, about the social credit system and the facial recognition where it can actually monitor things. But I guess systems like facial recognition are extremely useful when it comes to uh, crime management, when it comes to anti-terrorism, and when it comes to uh, disaster management. Uh, because these are the areas where uh, we, might, we have a lot of uh, high volumes of uh, criminals that abscound and uh, systems like these at railway stations and airports and public places, uh, I think there is no problem with that uh, because it's for our own security. We today already have uh, cameras that are public, uh, at public spaces to help do the same, but it's just humans monitoring them versus AI doing it. I remember there was a there is a story which is uh, talked about in Holland uh, during the World War II time. Just before that, they had a very good good filing system where they would file where the communities would live, and one particular communities uh, when the uh, German army uh, tried to get into that country, and they had access to that file of the graveyards, and they found it that one set of communities graveyard has been earmarked and that is how they backtracked and found the name of the people. Yeah. I hope you understand the Israelis, the Jewish people, and that ended up into a, a massacre. So artificial intelligence, big data, blockchain, they are fine, but what if they fall into the uh, wrong hand? Well, in your presentation also you made, you don't want to be at the back end of it, you want to be at the, leap, at the, at the front end so that you decide the rules of the game. And I assume that those rules need to be uh, uh, tweaked much faster than the technology movement. That's absolutely right. Uh, so technology is really moving fast and we need these regulations in place before we start using AI technology. What are the check and balances that needs to be there? Because one, the 5G is rolled into in, in India also and AI is already uh, uh, getting uh, into the system of the government and uh, public at large. Where do you see the right mix should be and what ideally the check and balances should be because that is most important. I think uh, honestly speaking we can never have enough checks and balances. The world moves, uh, the world has conflicts and it is going to continue this way. It's just that before the conflicts was with agriculture then it was with businesses and now it's going to be with data. Uh, so. Uh, the, the positive side of this, what I see, is that so far uh, we did not know where the conflicts would arise and we would not know how to end them. Now, uh, the data would start a revolution and the data would stop the revolution. So I guess now we at least have a way out when there is a conflict.
डाउनलोड तरंग ऑनलाइन रेडियो ऐप फ्रॉम गूगल प्ले स्टोर यू आर लिस्निंग टू तरंग डिवोशनल ऑनलाइन रेडियो 